Today I'm gonna give you my best 10 Fiverr tips to help you rank on the first page and get your first order on Fiverr if you haven't got it already and if you did they will increase your orders anyway so in both cases you definitely don't want to miss that out. As you can see right away I know what I'm talking about because I'm currently ranked on the first page but that was not always the case. It took me more than 7 months to get my first order on Fiverr and I don't claim that I'm an expert now but I learned everything firsthand and I had to test so many things and fail so many times literally wasting months and etc to get to this point where I can confidently say this is the stuff that I fixed and immediately after that I saw results so this video will be an absolute value bomb which I wish existed when I was getting started so I didn't have to waste so much time and energy to figure all this out but anyway here I am now at least I can share it with you so you don't have to go through all this as well and you can start getting some orders within your first month on the platform so among the original 10 Fiverr tips I will throw some extra tips in between while explaining them so I can assure you that every second of this video will be worth watching but without wasting more time let's start off with the first one and that is SEO so even though I didn't put them in any specific order I choose to start off with SEO because this is probably the most important one and without proper SEO everything else won't make any sense you can have the best profile and geek in the world but if no one can find you you'll never get any orders so that's why SEO is crucial but in this video I'm not just gonna point out 10 things to focus on and improve but I'll show you how to improve them as well. So in terms of SEO if I type in the search bar logo you can see how many services available will show up that offer a logo design. The competition for this keyword is just insane and trying to rank here will be simply an uphill battle. You're probably never going to rank within the first pages just because there are so many established sellers already under this category with thousands of reviews and you coming up fresh have a lot to prove to the algorithm and your potential customers. You never want to go that broad especially if you're just getting started you have to narrow it down and use more keywords to land in a less competitive subcategory for example you can see that Fiverr is giving me some suggestions because he's treating me like a buyer right now and he knows that this keyword is just too broad and he wants to help me narrow it down so the algorithm can show me more specific results so if I click on the first one logo design you can see that it removed almost 100,000 services from the results but this is still an incredibly high number however Fiverr is giving me suggestions again so let's see how many results will be for simple logo design. As you can see the services available dropped significantly but the number is still too high. Basically what you want to do is you want to go through all these suggestions one by one and see which one has the least amount of services available so you can have a decent chance to rank for these keywords. I know that sometimes it's very hard to find something that is first within your skills and you're comfortable doing it. Second there are not too many people offering that as a service and third there is a decent demand for it but taking the time to find that particular niche is absolutely crucial if you want to find success on Fiverr and as I said earlier if you don't do this properly the whole thing is just not gonna work out so for this example I actually did some research and I found the perfect keywords for you so you not just can see what exactly I'm talking about but you can also go ahead and open a gig for this service if you actually have the skills to make logos so this keyword is discord logo as simple as that. Sometimes you don't have to put 4 or 5 keywords to come up with something unique in order to get into a less competitive space. You would probably never think of discord logo as a keyword and that's why I said you have to spend the time to do proper research before you proceed to the next steps and I told you I will give you some additional tips while explaining the top 10. So in this case when you find a low competition keyword you want to make sure there is enough demand for it because you can go for something like Roblox logo for example and the competition will be even lower but but as you can see from the reviews of the first page sellers there is not enough demand for this keyword so low competition has to be backed by demand as well otherwise the results will be pretty much similar to what you can expect with the high competition keywords and another small tip here will be to check not just for demand but for current demand because in this case last year the number of discord servers saw a giant spike because of the hype around the nfts nft communities are mainly on discord and twitter and that caused the demand for discord logos and any other service related to discord to scroll. There is not much hype around the NFTs at the moment and I don't know how high is the demand for this service right now but the easiest thing you can do is to open up some of the gigs of the sellers on the first page and check how many orders they have in queue. From what I can see there is still a decent amount of demand for this service so this definitely won't be a bad idea to consider. Always check for the lowest competition keywords possible first and check if there's a demand for them as well before you open up a gig. Alright 
I think I spent quite a bit of time on this gig, but I really wanted to explain it in detail because I do believe it will play the biggest role in your success and I wanted to make sure you got it right. So the next tip is the thumbnail. This is gonna be a quick one and for many of you might sound a bit weird, but I messed up on this and I still see a good amount of people making the same mistake that I did. Basically, if you are using only images to showcase your service, this won't affect you. But if you're using a video, which I highly recommend no matter if your service doesn't really require one, you might stumble across this issue with the thumbnail. So when I created my first gig back in January this year, I had my introduction video ready to upload, but as you can see, there's nothing on the pages that provides information about the thumbnail of the video. Up here says that you have to either own or have the permission or license to use the content of your video. Here says the maximum size and length of the video you can upload, and when you hover your mouse over the video section, this message pops up that doesn't really give you any specific information about the requirements and all that, but it basically says that it would be a good idea to include a video in your gig because you will see better results, but nothing about the thumbnail. And back then I was a complete beginner and I had experience with YouTube, where there is a separate section designed specifically for the thumbnail. So considering that, the first thing that I noticed was this primary note with a star sign here on the image section, and I thought this is probably where I should put the thumbnail, as Fiverr has these weird namings in general, like calling their services gigs and etc. So like I said, I thought this is where my thumbnail should go, and that's what I did. I uploaded my video, I put the thumbnail as a primary image, and I went back to my gig page in my profile, and I saw my primary image as a thumbnail of my video, and at this point I was confident that I've done everything right. Of course I checked here on the preview how my gig looks like to the buyers, just to make sure everything is fine, and I found it weird that my primary image doesn't show up as a thumbnail, but I thought that's probably because I'm already in the gig, and within the search results the thumbnail should be showing up the way it's supposed to. Unfortunately that was not the case, and I found it 6 months after, when I went through the search results myself to find my gig, because I was wondering why I'm not getting almost any impressions, and I don't have any clicks for such a long time. My gig at that time was on page number 8, as far as I remember, and when I first saw it I was so disappointed of myself that I didn't check it sooner, because that would have sped up my success multiple times. But anyway, my tip for you today is, when you are creating an introduction video for your gig, put the thumbnail in the actual video. You can put it in the beginning just for a second, or you can put it at the end, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have the thumbnail inside the video, and when you upload it, click on this pencil icon to make an edit, and then this window will pop up that will make perfect sense. From here, you just have to hit the play, and then pause the video at the frame where is your thumbnail, and when you find it, just simply click this button set as preview, and now you have your thumbnail displayed on your video. Of course I highly recommend you double check from your preview page, just to make sure everything is done properly, and not just assume that is okay. So in conclusion for this tip, I wanna make it clear that this primary thing will serve as a cover for your gig when you don't have a video, so it will basically act as a thumbnail, but it has nothing to do with your thumbnail when you have a video uploaded. The thumbnail of your gig will be a random frame of your video if you don't adjust it yourself, as I showed you. But since we are in this thumbnail topic, my next tip is thumbnail dimensions. And what I mean by that is, can you see all these people who put their thumbnails, but they have been cut off from the sides, and you see half the text. There is literally thousands of people who got this issue on their gigs, just because this is another tricky thing by Fiverr. Basically, Fiverr put a recommended size for the image, but when you make your image this size and upload it, Fiverr simply scales it up and part of your image goes out of the frame. There is also no recommended size for the video. So what I did is, I made my video 1920 by 1080 pixels, but I made my thumbnail 1280 by 769, as this is the recommended size for an image. However, in order to be shown on full screen, you have to scale the image up, but then the sides will be cut off again. So I went back to Photoshop and I found the correct size that Fiverr displays on their site. Basically, you make your image 1280 by 769, as Fiverr recommends, but you have two options. First, you bring the rulers and put one vertical line at 100 pixels and one at 1180 pixels. Then you put one horizontal line at 20 pixels and one at 749 pixels. And now you have the frame that Fiverr will display on their site. So your first option will be to put white bars outside of this frame just to fill in the gap. And your second option is to make your image on the full frame, but keep the important stuff that you want to be shown on the inside frame. It is up to you how you want to do it, but just don't leave it blank. Put something in there. I don't really know why Fiverr is doing this, but it's honestly kind of silly and annoying, especially until you figure out how to fix it. So from here, you just export your image and put it in your video. Now you just scale it 
up to fit in the frame and as you can see these white bars are not visible on the search results and you have no cutoffs from your text or whatever. Tip number 4 Introduction video Like I said already I highly recommend you to have one no matter what type of service you are providing. My tip here is make it look absolutely amazing especially if you are providing a video editing service. High quality is a must. Spend 2, 3 or even 4, 5 days if you have to, to make it absolutely astonishing. Try to showcase as many different things you can do in terms of editing, so you can appeal to every possible customer. Let everyone find their editor within your video. It doesn't matter what you can do, if people don't actually see that you can do it, they will never know and they won't order your gig. And for the people outside of video editing, you don't need a fancy video. You just need to be kind and friendly, show previous work that you've done in the past if possible, or find a unique way to show yourself skills to the people who will visit your gig, so they can have a reason to buy it. You will make people trust you so much more if you show up on a video with your face and voice for a service that doesn't really require a video. Tip number 5. 7 gigs. When you're just getting started, make as many gigs as possible. Basically, you can open 7 gigs at most when you're a new seller, so open all 7. In the beginning, there will be probably a lot of trial and error, and Fiverr is a quite competitive platform, so it's gonna take you some time until you see any results, and you're basically going to increase your chances for success by 7 times if you open up 7 gigs. The idea here is to find 7 different keywords and open 7 gigs for them and leave the gigs running for a week or so. And when I say to open 7 gigs, I don't mean to offer 7 completely different services. If video editing is the one thing you can do, just find 7 different keywords for that niche, like wedding video editing, travel video editing, YouTube video editing and etc. The small tip here would be to analyze the results after a week or two and see how the gigs performed. If you didn't get any orders, check the amount of impressions and clicks to determine whether the gig is worth giving it a chance. Look at the ones that performed the best and replace the worst performing gigs with something similar to the best performers. For example, if dropshipping Facebook ads are doing well, change your gig that doesn't do too well with dropshipping TikTok ads. Basically, the data is telling you where you should focus. And if a certain keyword is not doing well, it is either too competitive or the demand is low. So you should move on to test another one. Tip number 6. Complete profile. Guys, you can't expect the maximum if you're giving the minimum. Fill in every single section possible and don't leave anything blank. Literally from top to bottom. I'm not gonna give you any tips on how to write your description and etc. Because the easiest thing you can do is to go to your main competitors that are doing great and don't just copy their description but use it as an inspiration to write yours. Use what's already working to make your own version of it. Things like language and stuff take a few seconds to be added. Take your time to list all the skills that you have because that will help your SEO. And as always, one small tip here would be to add certifications. If you go on this website called MyGreatLearning.com, you will find tons of free courses that you can enroll and when you finish them you will also get a certificate all for absolutely free. They have so many different courses for whatever you can think of and I'm sure most of you will find your field of service. I just want to make it clear that I'm not sponsored by this website. That's just what I used and you can use any other website of your choice. I just decided to share it with you because it's completely free and I thought that would be useful. One last thing about this tip that I want to mention is to make sure not just your profile is fully completed but your gigs as well. Wherever there is something to be added like extra services or FAQ or whatever, don't leave it blank. Just put something in there. Of course, make sure it makes sense but don't leave it blank. Tip number 7. Fiverr Courses Again, when you go to your profile and scroll down a bit, you will find this Learn from Fiverr section. When you click Enroll now, you will get to this page where you can find all the different courses Fiverr has to offer you. If you scroll down and click this button that says View All Courses, you will land on this page where you can actually see them all. Now, it might be a good idea to purchase one of these courses that is within your niche because that will be highly relevant and you can maybe learn a thing or two. But if you don't want to spend any money, you can actually scroll all the way down and find this course called Online Freelancing Essentials Be a Successful Fiverr Seller that costs zero dollars. This course basically explains how to get started and it might be a good idea for most of you to watch it because it will navigate you through the whole process very smoothly. But don't expect too much. This course covers just the basic stuff. However, the main point of this course is that after you finish it, you will get this badge on your profile that will not just indicate to potential buyers that you went through this course and you are a legit seller, 
but it will also send very positive signals to the Fiverr's algorithm because you actually took the time to go through the course and this automatically separates you from a big portion of your competitors. Now I don't know how many benefits you will get in terms of ranking because you got a course from their Fiverr approved list of courses but I'm almost certain that this stuff does matter and it does make a difference. I don't know how big of a difference but I'm sure you will send positive signals to the algorithm that you are actually serious about your Fiverr game and that will be rewarded. Tip number 8. Raise your price. Yes, you heard me correctly. When people get started on Fiverr, they tend to put very low prices and undercut the competition in order to get noticed and get their first order. However, they usually put just too low of a price and they make themselves look unprofessional and even buyers start questioning the legitimacy of their service. Of course, when you have no reviews, which is essentially the most important thing on this platform, you want to set your prices just below your competition so you can have a fair chance for someone to choose you instead of the seller with hundreds of reviews that is well established on the platform. Just don't make the mistake to set your prices too low. For example, if your competitors are selling the same service for between $30 and $50 and you set your price at $5 thinking that this will be a very tempting deal for the buyers, you will most likely end up with no orders because you will look like a scammer in their eyes, especially when you don't have any record of previous orders on Fiverr. So in this case, I recommend you to go with something like $10 at the very least and if you don't get any orders, you can try to raise it a bit more to let's say $20, which is still below your competitors. So in conclusion, in the beginning it's good to undercut the competition, just don't go too low. Tip number 9. Max out your clients. If you followed all the tips that I mentioned in this video, at some point you will get your first sale. Here your job as a freelancer should be to make everything you can to make them purchase your gig more than once. And trust me, this is crucial. You already converted a visitor into a buyer and now you just have to convince them to buy again and again. And that's not because of the money making aspect, because your prices are set low at the moment to attract buyers and you won't really make a lot of money. The goal here is to make as many orders as possible and since you already have someone with their wallet wide open in front of you, you have to take advantage of that and make them order your service as many times as possible. My small tip here would be that the best way to do this is to deliver incredible service and be super communicative with them. Don't make them wait for a response for hours. Try to answer them ASAP and when the conversation starts, reply as quickly as possible and of course be polite and sound professional. By doing all that and delivering exactly what they've asked for, not just gonna earn you a 5 star review, which should be your main goal, but there is a very high chance of ordering again from you. Because you don't charge a lot, you respond quickly and you deliver exactly what they want. So that could be multiple orders for you that will trigger the algorithm quite well and also potentially multiple 5 star reviews, which are even better for the algorithm and for your profile overall look. Of course, you can apply some different sales tactics like offering a discount for multiple orders and all that, but your main focus should be on the quality of the service. Even if you have to spend extra time and the price that you will charge will be way lower than what is supposed to be, just do it because this will pay off in the long run. Tip number 10. Title, Description and Response Rate Well, I left this for the end because it's basically common sense and also everyone is talking about it, but I still wanted to include it in my list because you definitely don't have to overlook it. Your title is your main SEO lever and we already talked about how we have to put our keywords in the title, but just make sure you keep it short and sweet and be creative. Also, don't forget to sprinkle some of your keywords in the description of your gig, but along with the keywords, let the buyers know what you are able to do and what they should expect from your service, why they should purchase your gig instead of someone else's and keep your description well organized and easy to read. My small tip here would be to go and check your main competitors descriptions and again not just copy everything word by word but just get an inspiration to write yours. And of course last but not least, your response rate should be spot on. Inbox response rate, order response rate, delivered on time, order completion. Everything should be if not 100% at least as close as possible and of course inbox response time as low as possible. Now this is a perfect example because I simply can't make this any better. You can't go lower than 1 hour average inbox response time and you can't have more than 100% on the others. So aim to have the same stats as mine but if not try your best to be as close as possible. And another small tip I can give you here is to stay online as much as you can. When you are online this small dot will stay green and you are not just gonna send positive signals to Fiverr that you are active every day but you will have a higher chance someone 
to text you because it will expect a response right away. And to be able to keep the response time as low as mine, I recommend you install the Fiverr app on your phone so you will get notified when someone sends you a message and you can reply immediately. But that's not all because I decided to give you one bonus tip and that is buy a request. Basically, when you go up here where it says my business, you will find the buy a request tab. And if you don't know what this is, essentially Fiverr is a digital marketplace where people can find different services and purchase the one that they like the most and suit their needs. But if for some reason they struggle to find the perfect seller, they can make a buyer request where they explain in detail what they are looking for and sellers can now send offers to try to win them as a customer. To be honest, I didn't find this feature very useful so far because for some reason almost every time when I come to this section there are no requests. Of course this is filtered by Fiverr based on what services you provide and maybe people don't send requests for video editing that much. But so far I managed to send an offer for only one request and I didn't get the job. So it might be different for your type of service and it's definitely worth giving it a try since you can actually send a message directly to someone who is looking to buy your service and you can unfold your sales pitch and convert them into a customer and not just wait for someone to find you. Of course there are many other things we can talk about Fiverr in order to improve our performance but I think this is a very solid 10 plus 1 list with some additional small tips here and there and I spent quite some time putting everything together. So if you find any of these tips useful all I'm asking for is just to smash the like button for me because this will help me a lot. I will keep uploading valuable stuff about Fiverr and I cover other money making topics as well. So if you don't want to miss any videos in the future consider subscribing to my channel. You can also watch my 7 months Fiverr journey till I get my first order where I also share what I was doing wrong and what I fixed in order to get my first order. I wait you there.